Welcome back to Trey and Tonya's Novology. You are in tune to season four, first episode. It's been Hi a minute. guys. It's Welcome minute. back. It's been a minute. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, lots been going on. Again, um, we've been communicating with you guys through Facebook as well as Twitter as to why we haven't taped um, since our holiday uh, episode. A lot's been going on. You know, my baby had an emergency surgery. So we had to make sure home was taken care of first before we, you know, did our show. So um, and thanks to everybody that has been checking on me, wishing me well. I appreciate the love, and I miss you guys. She sure. definitely do. She keeps saying, "Maybe we need to tape." Because I, I get so many inquiries about when are you guys gonna tape? When are you guys gonna tape? Slow poke over here. I'm the one that be ready. Trey play. Listen here, it ain't so about y'all get on tray. No, it's not about being no slow poke. I got to be the doctor at the home, okay? And when there was a prescription that was written to me as the take home doctor, I followed those prescriptions. Yes. My baby, on the other hand, would have been laid up here, stomach all stitched up, trying to do a show. We're not doing that. <laughs> we're not doing that. So I told her it's not happening. So finally tonight, you know, we're going ahead and get our tape on. That's correct. And you guys have been patient, and we appreciate that. We do appreciate that. But I must interject for one second. There you go. <clears throat> Because we were in the process of preparing to tape for tonight. And if you all look at Trey's wardrobe, do you notice he has summer mixed with winter? Oh. He has on a wife beater and a scarf. Where do they do that at? Well, if you have been a, a, a true follower, you know that my neck gets cold. <laughs> no, his neck don't. My <laughs> neck. Not my arms, my neck. So his therefore, neck I don't. always like to keep my neck warm. Trey's line. That's and an excuse also, to wear that damn scarf. Am I not battling the cold, baby? I am Even that. without a cold, you wear the scarf. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm battling a cold right now. So you know how we do, guys. No, the, but he's definitely mixing his season, so check it out. Man, Arms out and scarf. Scarf's not going nowhere. Y'all should know that right now, as my peoples call me scarfy. Hurry up, Summer. In the building, and it will still be in the building. No, but I will cut that scarf, and you will have a little drape. Next week on our <clears throat> domestic violence episode, <laughs> Tanya might be the star of that. Whatever. But anyway, um, it's been great. Uh, my baby's doing wonderfully. Yes, I'm healing well. Um, just to give a little, uh, I guess, health promo, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, make sure you guys get always your get your physical, get a checkup. Had she had not gotten her physical, we would not have known about her blood condition. and um, yeah, severely anemic, and severely I didn't know anemic. it. I didn't know I was walking around dizzy, walk up three flights of stairs, and I'm exhausted. Very fatigued, always tired. I just thought because I was maybe out of shape mm -hmm. that that's what was wrong. But I went to get my yearly physical. They did my blood work. And I got a call back that same night telling me I need to go to the nearest emergency room. So that scary. scared the mess out of us. Scared the hot and I knew I had fibroids. And I knew I wanted my fibroids taken out after the wedding towards the end of the year. But so happened the fibroids were taking away my blood, which made me have very little. A woman's blood count should be 12 to 14. Mine was a 5.5. So, Thank ladies, you, take care of yourself. Make sure you know your your, your blood level. Make Saturday. sure you know everything um, about your health because we never know. And I could have been sitting on the couch and the next day I could have dropped dead because they was like, they don't even know how I was walking around. That's true. And so one thing we I also had to have know, an emergency surgery um, two days later. We also know. Baby, you, you, I'm going to turn that TV off. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to turn it off because I'm gonna looking at the TV. I'm, I'm cutting it off. It I'm off so right sorry. <laughs> this is some bull. I tell you, I'm we don't sorry. work for a couple of weeks, and you're just a hot mess, baby. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even gonna re start with Whatever, sober either. Scarfie. Anyway, another thing, um, my black women out there, it is very prominent in black women to have fibroids, and it's it, it's it's empirical that you guys continue to get it checked. I had mine removed when I had the surgery. My baby had hers removed. My sisters have it. A lot of the teachers that I work with have it. And I'm like the big spokesperson now. I've already given our doctors um, information to about four or five ladies at my job because it's very important. We never know how bad um, these these um, fibroids, fibroids grow. Because I knew I had them like years ago, but they were very small. Yeah, but when and that joker came out, my whole uterus. So it was it was huge. Yeah, but um, you know, just to let you guys know that we, we are we are very big promo um, promoters of, of being staying in health and. Yeah. Keeping healthy because you know we all want to see live to see tomorrow. But um, again, what else happened? Valentine's Day. Oh Lord Jesus, y'all, my baby laid it out for me. Yes, she did. I'm not. I can't even tell y'all the details, but I'm just saying. She told me to knock on the door right when I got home. Knock on the door. I did. 
Then what else when I said knock on the door when you come in the house? Man, I ain't got no all that. No, I gave Trey instructions to call me. Man, she, you were three minutes right. away from the house. She said meet you in the room. That's all she and said. And no, I said knock on the door when you walk up the steps, and he did. And when he came on the door, I said follow my instructions and drop all your clothing at the front door. Because we had to do laundry, right? No, we did not. <laughs> <laughs> and it went from there, but my baby had we a did. very, very good Valentine's, as well as I. We had a really good Valentine's, which every day to us is Valentine's. And right, we did miss so. taking pride, too, because we did have some, a Valentine question. That we, we still may try to slide in at the end of the segment. Right. But um, Valentine's to us is every day. It's That's 365 true. days a year. And I recommend that for every couple that tunes into I Love All of You. Don't just celebrate it on February the 14th. No, man. Celebrate that love every single day. That's true. Because tomorrow is not promised. That's true, baby. Good one. Mm. That's great. That's a good one. Um, well, we're going to go ahead and go right into our question and segment, answer segment. And we're going to do one complete taping. One right? complete so taping. So we're not breaking the segments no. up anymore. We're going to try to stick to one taping and just keep the questions flowing. And I tell you, we have some really, really, really good, yeah. interesting topics of discussion. And because we've been away so far, this one's going to be longer than the 30 minute yeah. because we do want to address the questions that came in. And we're just going to address about five, maybe six of them. And um, that's about all we can do for tonight. And all we're right? sure that these questions that we read, they not only hit home to the person that sent them in, but they hit home to a lot of people that watch our shows. Right. And that's why we kind of like take this to heart. And it's crazy that we get so many people text, well, inboxing us, asking us, when are you guys taping? We miss you guys. When are you guys taping? Call because in. a lot of people do need this. And it's yeah. like therapeutic for everybody that's in a relationship because mm-hmm. we never know what each other is going through when it comes to your relationships. That's true. Including us. Including, including us. us you know? So a lot of stuff we read, it sometimes hits home for us. And it also gives us eye openers as well. And it's always good to hear, hear it coming from a third party because when you're sitting at home battling with each other back and forth, you're just going to keep doing that and you're going to keep hitting that dead wall. But until you hear it from somebody else on the outside looking in, it kind of makes you put things into perspective and you have a better, clear understanding of where you're going with your relationship. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, the first one is pretty lengthy. Yeah. And um, I guess for you guys to truly understand the question, we have to read. I have to read it. What was sent in. Yeah. Okay. So you want to read it, babe? Sure. Okay. I can read it because I actually responded to the person that sent this in to me because I needed to pretty much give her some advice right away because this kind of um, email, it really bothered me. It really did. So with that being said, listen in, tune in, and make sure you guys give us your feedback on what you think when it comes to these um, questions. It says, good morning. Wasn't sure which inbox this should be sent to. Just hoping for some advice. I found your YouTube webinars and have watched every last one of them. It was very therapeutic for me and helping me. Not asking for airtime, just need help. I'm at the point of no return, just frustrated, heart hurt, and eyes full of tears. Please just give me the best advice. This is my first homosexual relationship ever. After a year, my partner and I got married. This is someone I went to school with this person and never knew this was their lifestyle. We met back up on Facebook. It went from there. She swept me off my feet, treated me like a queen, never treated like this before, had been in a relationship with a man for nine years, never received the treatment that she has shown me. She is a stud, and I often say a burrow, girl, a boy trapped in a woman's body, <laughs> LOL. I feel as the wife, I get the short end of the stick. She's not attentive. I beg for sex. I have asked if she is not attracted to me. She said, no, that is not it. She said she's tired from school and work. I wear many hats as well. Employee, mom, wife, and I make sure daily comes I make sure I come home daily to clean the house and anything else. I struggled with the relationship in the beginning because I was so into church, but I really love her. I feel like I have put so much of myself to the side for this person. I lost many friends due to this marriage. Although if they were true friends, they would still be around no matter what. Recently I gave her a condom. She knew that meant strap up. She looked in my face and just laughed. (laughs) Sorry, I was acting it out. Needless to say, it wasn't used. When I try to touch, when I try to touch her, my hands are moved and thrown back. So, so I won't touch. I often tell her, "You treated the exes better, and I am the wife." Where do they do that at? Where they do that at? Exactly. I understand she has a full schedule, but she still has an obligation as my husband. If that is what she is going to be, otherwise, I just feel she needs to leave me alone. As I'm writing, I'm fighting back tears. 
Any advice you have for me is good. Wow. It's heavy. You got to go first so I can digest it again. That's a lot, man. Um, mm -hmm. It's a lot of subjects she hit on. Yeah. I guess we, we've had the segment about the touch me not studs. Um, but I think this is this is much deeper than yeah, that. It's totally different. Um, this person seem to be um, in a relationship with a person who is acting as if they're just not that into her. And um, this woman seems like she has totally turned her life around, not turned her life around, but changed her lifestyle to be with this individual. And I'm assuming it's because you love this person, else you wouldn't have done it. Uh, a person can't make you do something. So the choice you made was your decision. But for her to be treating you this way um, is, it's just wrong. It's truly just wrong. Um, I'm not sure if you've asked her if she's attracted to you. Um, there's a lot of questions that I would have for your partner, the yeah, girl. If she married her. Well, whether and well, she lost the attraction. That's what you mean. I don't know if she did. I mean, she said she's not attentive. She has to beg for sex. Um, oh, she said I have asked if she's not attracted to me. She said no. That is not it. So what is it? And the whole excuse of being tired from school and work, hell, I get tired too. Everybody get tired. But if this is something that's consistent and this person is not being attentive and being um, romantically involved with you, there has to be something else. And I guess the question I ask is down here when you said I gave her a condom, why did you give her a condom? When you guys normally have sex, do you do it without condom? Why this time? I I'm not She's understanding. She's probably saying that's what they don't normally put on the strap. Oh, so she a lot of studs up. put a condom on the strap. Why? It's just for easy access. It takes less lubrication. So their vagina is not wet. I'm sure it is. Honey. Oh, well, I'm sorry. But yeah, a lot of a lot of people use condoms on the strap. Well, I I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, so go ahead, carry on. I guess it's just too many unanswered questions. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, again, by no means am I dismissing your your email. What I what I would like is to be able to have some kind of communication with your partner. Because that's the person who I have questions with. I can't assume based on what you've sent in to me. I feel it's wrong that you've been treated this way. But for me, it's just too many unanswered questions for me. Must be a lady question right here. It's not it's too many unanswered questions for me because I'm going to step in and say exactly how I feel. And like I said, we have we are like a... Um, I have no nonsense for when it comes to stuff like this because I'm, I'm sure that... When you say I do with anybody in a, in a relationship, and that means marriage, that's a that's a commitment. That's a lifetime commitment because you fell in love. I love this person. I want to be with this person for the rest of my life, etc. However, things have took a turn of events for you that I noticed. You begging for sex. She's not attentive. She's you, you may think she you may think she's not even attracted to you anymore. And when you ask her these questions, she know it's not you. When you try to get the sex, she laugh at you. What the hell is funny? I don't see what's funny. You shouldn't have to ask her for anything. Cause she should already know what needs you have as, as 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 her lady. I mean, come on. There are times my baby, like I said, come home. You may be a little tired, but I know when to tell Trey um, what time it is as well too, and I shouldn't have to repeat myself. So things like, I mean, mm, like I said, I mean, my first thing for you is see if you can really sit down and have an open line of communication with her and go from A to Z how you feel. However, in between each question, you need an answer. You don't need a uh, talk later or short answers. No, you need to give her your question. Say, okay, say, since you've married me, what has changed in our relationship that you don't like? And get an answer. Since you've married me, why have the sex changed? And get an answer. Don't just have a big brawl of a discussion with her and then she's not giving you the answers that you need. Because right now, it's like you're trying to read her mind and we're not mind readers. And she needs to come up to the step up to the plate to see what's going on. If if she's not attractive any if she's not attracted to you anymore, you need to know that. You don't want to sit down or sit around the house thinking that this is my soulmate for the rest of my life. And in the back of her mind, she's like, Man, I'm not even I don't even know why I'm here. I'm not even attracted to her anymore. I've lost the love. The love is gone. If it is, you need to know that. So she can stop wasting your time. I have issues with people in relationships, time being wasted. Life is too short. We can't waste each other's time. If the thrill is gone, the love is gone. Just find a way. If you don't want to break a heart, write a letter. Find a way to let her know and express it. Don't waste the lady's time. So for you, sweetheart, that sent this email in to me, try to have a some form of communication with her or write her the letter if she don't want to talk to you face-to-face. -face. Write her a letter with your questions and you want them answered. 
and she needs to write you a letter back and she don't want to talk to you that way right now. It's got to be a better way because from what I'm hearing, she's not that into you. It's like the movie. She's not that into you and all the signs are there, but because you love her and you, this is your first homosexual relationship, you, you're trying to really give it your all and not let your marriage go and not let it go out the wayside. But she got to be, she got to be, to the, she got to step up to the plate and do her part. Well, this young lady right here also sound, you sound mad to me. You sound mad She's and it, it, it's, and you also feel as though, I mean, this, what keeps sticking out to me as I'm looking at your email here is I have put so much of myself to the side for this person. You can't lose yourself in a relationship. No, whether it's, whether this is your first homosexual relationship or not, or your first heterosexual, within any relationship, you cannot lose yourself. So you need to find yourself again. Because if you feel like you're sacrificing you for this person, then the relationship is going, it's going to doom. It's going to drop. It's going to bomb out. Whether or not this person come around, because again, you're not being true to yourself because you're putting all these, you're putting yourself to the side to make this person happy. You got to get yourself back. And you need to be happy. First and foremost. That's true. That's true. Well, that leads us right into our next question. Um, and it's one that we, we have gotten quite often. And it says, if you see your partner every day after a while, what do you talk about? Again, I mean, this is like an everyday. That's crazy. That is very crazy. <laughs> um, many times we're riding down the streets and we look in other people's cars and we're like, I'd be like, damn, baby, these folks not even talking to each other. Oh, we had a restaurant. And, and the people just looking around, not saying a word to each other with the person across the table for them. Or we're at an event and we can't even tell who's coupled up yeah, because there's not no romantic, affection. No touching. There's nothing. That drives both of us insane. You know what I'm saying? Because we're always under each other, touching, hugging, kissing. It don't feel right when that's not happening. Yeah. It's like, even when she mad at me, I'm right up under her. I don't yes. care. Yes. When I'm and not his friend, he still try to sit by me, hold I my do. hand. I do. Yeah. I do. And I'm going to keep doing it. Because that's that's what I do and that's what I know and that's my baby. I don't care how mad she is with me. If I gotta hold her hand real tight so she don't move, that's what I'm going to do. But I'm so tired of people always saying they in love and they love each other, but when you see them, you can't tell. So to the person who sent this in, if you see your partner every day after a while, what do you talk about? Every and anything. You're right. It's so much to talk about in so a relationship. Much. You should never run out of things to talk about. Talk about your day. Your future. Talk about plans. your future. What it, you know, your five job. year projection. I mean, yeah. It's so much to talk about. Things you want to do, make happen. Things you want to do around the house. Check in with the person. Yeah. Baby, you know, we've been together for so long. Is there anything that you think I can work on? You're Have right. a conversation about it. You know, or just sit down and tell the person, you know, I just wanted to let you know I love you so much. I, there's, and I, have, I haven't expressed that to you in a long time. So let me go ahead and tell you how much you mean to me. Talk about anything. And my favorite part is pillow talk. Yes, Lord. I mean, just laying in the bed, no TV, no mm -hmm. music, no nothing. Just talk. You got to have something to talk about right. with your mate. Just don't do it right when I'm getting ready to fall asleep, though, because I'm real tired. <laughs> <laughs> She don't find that funny. That's not funny. My baby know I'm horrible. When I'm ready to go to sleep, I'll be like, uh. And but vice you know versa. Because sometimes vice versa. you talk to me and I'm sleeping. All right. And I tell her stories and it's okay that she go to sleep. I'll make her think she's dreaming. <laughs> That's okay with me. But there's lots to talk about. Talk yeah, about it should anything. always be. You should never run out of things to talk about in your relationship. And one thing I think is real helpful is well, if you're, you got something I'll like that. Wish. Thank you, baby. Want to make a wish? You yeah. lost it. Gosh. Um. Sometimes when we're watching TV, whether it's shows or whatever, connect it with your life somehow. You know, there's times we pause the TV and we just talk about it. How, how does it connect with us? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I teach my students that a lot. When they're reading stories, what kind of connections can you make to the story? You as couples, um, you as couples out there, you guys can do that also. Never run, run out of things to talk about. I think when you start to run out of things, you're starting to get bored with each other. Okay. And that's not and good. Co and too comfy. Yeah. Too comfy. And that's not good. Yes, God. Man, this is a good one. We got some deep questions tonight, and, and I'm really thoroughly enjoying this. Well, you can read it because um, I don't know what it is. I would definitely read it, but right before we do that, we just want to tell our viewers to always subscribe and to our YouTube. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. And Trey toasting. Tanya Loveology. Trey Tanya Loveology on Twitter. And we are Trey Tanya Loveology on YouTube. So always subscribe, follow us. Um, we're getting other people to follow us. We're communicating with other folks as well, networks and so forth. So again, just always remember to tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend to subscribe. To and Train thank and you for those that happen to slip up on our videos and end up watching them all. 
we, pass we, it on. we surely appreciate that. Pay it forward. Because YouTube is large, and for you to just be soaring through YouTube and find our videos and watch them. Evidently, something about our, our videos that's intriguing to you that make you watch more than one. So we definitely appreciate that love and the following. Ah, sexiness. All right, we're going to our next question. And it reads, I love you guys. We love you too. We, we do love you guys back. I love you guys, and I really value your opinions. I have one question for now. I'm going to keep it quiet or quick because... I want you all to spend more time on the questions that then reading who I feel. How I feel about it. It says who? I know, but they mean Okay. It. On the question, then reading how I feel about it. The question is, what do it mean when a person can live with you, make love with you, go everywhere with you, but won't marry you because they feel as if they would be slapping <laughs> Let me God do in the face. Since being together is a sin anyway. Whoa. Oh. Hold on, Shorty. Out. The question is. Read that again. The question is, what do it mean when a person can live with you, make love with you, go everywhere with you, but won't marry you because they feel as if they would be slapping God in the face since being together is a sin anyway. Wow. Okay. Thank you again for watching our shows. Thank you. And thank you for valuing our opinions because we're going to go in on this one. Mm. And a are Sunday. You, are, you a, are you in a lesbian relationship and you're saying that this is a sin anyway? Or are you saying your partner is saying it's a sin anyway? I don't know. who. Somebody's saying it's a sin. Right. However, you're not being true to yourself if you feel like it's a sin. First and foremost, God loves us all. And that's, that's the only person that judges our life, period. Um, that shouldn't be a slap in the face. However, you said, I'm going to back up first. A person <coughs> can live with you, make love with you, go over with you, but won't marry you. Somebody want to get married in this relationship, another person don't. Right. And I'm assuming that they're using God as the reason why they can't get married. I'm, seeing, I'm thinking so, baby. Oh, okay. Well, so it's a valid question. It's, it's a valid because a lot of people ponder this. Um... This is where you have to really come to terms with your beliefs um, and your Lord and Savior and pray and ask for guidance. There's no way in my heart and soul that we would be a part of another woman's life if these things were not meant to be. If the Lord wanted everybody in this world to be straight, narrow, heterosexual, and I believe he had, he had all the powers to make that happen. Unfortunately, we all are different breeds. We can't. We shouldn't be shunned because of who we are. We shouldn't be turned away. We should, I mean, those things should not matter because my heart loves a woman. That's all that matters. And anybody in my space has to respect how I feel. June 23rd, I'll be marrying the love of my life, which is Trey. That's me. And nobody in the atmosphere of my life can change that. No. I don't think, I personally never thought loving a female was a sin. Because we all say we wasn't asked to be this way. And Lord knows I've felt like I've liked women since I was in elementary school. Um, <coughs> did me. I know anything about the lifestyle at the time? No, we have no clue what it is. We don't know why we like the same sex. I mean, as you get older, you start hearing, you know, the negative feedback of the, the, the lesbian lifestyle or the gay lifestyle. And I think it kind of gets twisted in our heads that it's a sin, it's a sin, it's a sin. And then there are some preachers out there that preaches that it's a sin. But then we have those preachers that it's non-denominational that preaches it's not a sin. Right. So at this point, you have to follow your own heart and follow your God. That's the only person that you answer to. So it shouldn't be a slap in the face. If you love somebody, you spend your time with somebody, you want to marry this person, the sex to me doesn't matter. Because if you love, I fell in love with Trey before the sex was even introduced to us. So it, it doesn't really fall to the barriers of, oh, God, they're the same sex. No, I fell in love with a being. I fell in love with this person. Yes. That's who I fell in love with. So you kind of have to follow your heart and do a whole lot of soul searching and praying for you to get past it. Because at once upon a time, I kind of thought the way that you're thinking now that if I marry somebody as, as the, same, the same sex, I'm going to hell. To, today, I don't feel that way. I'm very, very confident in where I am in my life. You know, this all goes back to our upbringing and... 
what we've been taught and I'm not sure what your partner's upbringing is because it seems like the person who is sending in this question, their partner is struggling with this um, idea of marriage to the same sex. Um, I too had a problem um, being open with have, you know, being in a, in a gay relationship because of my upbringing, because of my cultural background, as most of, culture, you, uh, don't know. most of most of you guys know, um, I'm from Jamaica. Uh, when you talk in Jamaican form, maybe, maybe later on. But anyway, um, I'm trying to be serious. Here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry for your question. Jeez, man. But you can't be serious in your accent because you do speak Jamaican because you are. A Jamaican trade. But I'm just saying, this person won't even know what I'm saying if I do that, babe. But the some viewers out there do understand the language. Well, I'll hit it up. Later. I do. Maybe let me focus. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. So anyway, um, because of my cultural um, background and, and my upbringing, I was born in Jamaica. It is frowned upon to be gay. I mean, you can really get casterized and, and just really, really hurt physically and emotionally if you were to have that. Uh, be open out there or with some people that's here that's still what that's what's in them. So I understand where your partner is coming from. Um, it could be that that's how they were brought up. That being gay is is a sin. It, it's it's bad. It's not godly like. But as my baby say, you and your partner, not even you, but your partner needs to come um, come to grips with what she believes and not what she was taught. She has to study the word and study the Bible to get a true meaning for herself. That's true. Because um, that, the, the Bible is, is a resource that we as individuals have to interpret. Okay? That's true again. Those, those words are written by man. And everybody you know, don't interpret and it Everyone same. don't interpret the Lord the same way. Mm -hmm. So based on the word, you have to interpret it for yourself. And I mean, that's the best that I can do. And pray about it. And pray about it. Because me can't say nothing else to you now. Because anything they tell you right now, you're probably not going to understand. You understand me right? <laughs> Get them, baby. You see what I say? <laughs> so you go out and tell your girlfriend that she has to go read the Bible and listen to the word for your, from our from, from fear heart. Because right now, you can't do that fear. And that's what I have to say in Jamaican. <laughs> I love it. It's so sexy, guys. She Don't you agree? You play too much, man. She play too much, you know. Play too much, man. <laughs> Oops. I'm sorry. I love it. It's see, so sexy. See how she got me fooling around here. I absolutely. You fooling around with that scarf, oh, but I love it, guys. Talk about my scarf again. Ooh. She liked that. I like she that. Be Ooh, you see? Mm -hmm. Fresh. That turns me on. Fresh. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love it. But anyway, you know, best of luck with that question. And please have your partner write us in if she would like to share yeah. her point of view. Because yeah. as always, we take no sides. We give our opinions. Mm -hmm. We're humans and we're always open. And we're always open to hear the other side. Because there's always, always two. Always two. And there have been several times where we've, able, we've been able to hear both sides yes. of the story. Because sometimes it is one side and we, don't, we can only respond to what we hear. Yes. And then the partners come back like, well, no, that's not how it went. And right. then we get the other side. And, and, you know, just to put ourselves into your shoe, my baby and I are getting married, as you, as we um, stated before, mm -hmm. June 23rd. In Hawaii. And if we were having our wedding here in, in, um, in Atlanta, I might have one person from my family that would attend. Mm -hmm. And my entire family lives here. But they love her. Mm -hmm. They have dinner with her. They, my mom just called and was like, where's your baby at? Or, you know, and I said, mommy, she says she loves you. And, you know, she said, I love her back. But to tell you the truth, I don't think my mom would in, would come to our wedding because that's what she was taught, how she was brought up. You know, that's what she, um, that's what my sisters were taught. That's what how they were brought up. So would I not be with my baby because of what others feel or what the religion, the religious teachings that I receive? Yeah. If that's the case, her and I wouldn't be together. I myself had to interpret it for myself mm -hmm. and follow my heart. Yeah. Because the Lord always tells us to render our hearts, not our garments, and others' beliefs. Check it out. Exactly. I'm so serious. And speaking of rendering our hearts and not our garment nor our body, this leads us right into our next question, baby. Alrighty. It's a big one. Okay. No pun intended. We're here. It is. You can okay. see. Here goes. Hope you can help. I've been dating my girlfriend for six months. She was 300 pounds and has lost over 60 pounds in these few months. She's working out four times a week, has modified her diet, so she's losing quickly and still wears big baggy clothes, and I have not seen her naked. And she does not allow me to touch her sexually with all her clothes on 
with the lights with the lights out, mind you. So my question is, how can I be physically attracted to her when I don't know what she has underneath her clothes? I'm attracted to everything else about her, but just not physically. Okay. Oh, are you are you not attracted because you can't see what's underneath there? So it seems like she's trying to be with her partner. Her partner don't want her to touch her because of the because weight. Because of the weight. Because of the weight. Because I'm sure that if she met her, she knew she was big already. Right. And she's losing weight. And she's, I guess the partner's, in, the person that's losing weight is insecure. Mm hmm And the person that's, that sent this in mm -hmm. wants to love on her, wants to fill on her, but she don't want her to. Right. So she's saying... But the last sentence just threw me off. I think she's saying, but just not physically. They don't have that physical attraction okay. because she's not allowing her to touch her. Oh, okay. Um, I think. I'm, I'm assuming that's what's, what, it, what the case is. We're going to assume that's what it is. If we're not correct, send us in a... Yeah, we, yeah. Can, we can retract Send a question statement. again if, if we're not correct. If we're not correct. But based on what you've sent in, um, you're going to have to be patient. Yeah. You're going to have to be patient. This is a person who's battling with um, being in large and, and sell her self esteem. It's extremely low. Extremely low. And I'm not sure if it, I'm not sure if it's the kind of weight when it loses that the, the skin it's is loose. And sagging. And sagging. It so does. that will take somebody some time to open up and let you see their partner or not. Yeah. This is a personal thing. It's nothing to do with you. Yeah. Okay, um, so you're going to have to be patient. Try to talk. Re, what is it called? Reassure your partner mm -hmm. that, that you, love her, you love her no matter regardless. what. You loved her when she was 300 pounds. Now she's 240 pounds. You still love her. Yeah. And, and you know maybe I don't know if you can give her some suggestion as to let's try to tighten up whatever. Ask her. Ask her. Is it the loose skin that's making her uncomfortable? Ask her. Is it because she is still at a heavy weight? that she doesn't want to be touched. Um, ask her what you can do to make, I guess to compromise the situation. What can you do? You probably are trying to do too much. Well, I can understand her self-esteem issues because all women, I guess not all, most women do have, even women that are small, right. have some type of esteem issues where whereas they maybe feel like they're too skinny and they're embarrassed for right. their mate to see them. Or some may feel like they have the breast too tiny or mm -hmm. they look that they have a pudge in their stomach or they butt too flat. So I think we all have flaws when we it do. comes to our body. We do. We I all do. Right here. And <laughs> I do have a pimple. You guys see it. Whatever, babe. No, seriously. We all have flaws when it comes to our bodies. But if you were with her when she was 300 pounds, it, it, uh, she allowed you in her life and she opened up enough to allow you to be her partner while she was heavy. And now she's losing the weight. She should kind of start releasing that esteem and should feel more confident about herself now. Now, I guess that's when the communication does come in. You're going to have to really sit down and ask her, what is it that you can do to show her you love her right. physically? Um, what if you touch certain parts of her body, how would she feel? Right. So you got to kind of slowly open up and have these conversations with her. Maybe it's going to be hard. It may be a little bit embarrassing, mm -hmm. but you got to have these conversations with her right. because you don't want to lose the love and right. lose the total attraction that you do have for her, even with her being on the heavier side. Right. So it's got to be that communication that you guys have to sit down and have. And even if it, even if it starts with the lights off, it's okay. Yeah. As long as she allow you to touch her, kiss her, caress her, she got to find a way to slowly open up for you, but you do have to bear with her. Because of where she's coming from, baby steps. Yeah. Start with a don't part give of the up. body. Don't give up on her because this is the time she needs you the most because she's losing the weight. And, and try to just start with a part of the body where she mm -hmm. does feel comfortable with you touching. Yeah. And hopefully, there's something. It could just be her face and yeah, make caressing her, way her down kissing her. Something. I mean, she got to allow you to touch her somewhere because yeah. I know she don't want to be alone. Right. I mean, if you have a self-esteem issue, you don't want to be alone. Right. And then for somebody to come in your life and love you regardless of how you, your size, um, that that should, that for her is a plus. Mm -hmm. So she got to find a way to open up for you as well and, you know, let you in. She can't keep shutting you out. Mm -mm. She got to open up. So you got to talk to her and, you know, take baby steps and asking her these little questions that won't hurt her feelings. Yeah. And make sure you ask the questions the right way so it's not like you coming down on her, like be, making her making her feel like you're offending her. So be careful how you ask the questions. And also let her know how it's making you feel. Yeah, let her yeah. know how it makes you feel. Because she is, just because um, she's the one who's telling you you can't touch her, 
that's a form of rejection mm-hmm. to you. And I don't do re- rejection at all. I, Tanya, don't do rejection. She don't. At all. At Zero. All. She don't. At all. She don't at all. <laughs> I do I do find that comical, baby. Because, Why? Because, I mean, but you're... I don't listen do here, rejection. Folks. I have a problem with that. Listen here, folks. Mm-hmm. Let me go on back no. to my stuff more I'm quick. full. I'm rotten. I don't do rejection. Point blank. Dot, dot, period. And what my baby don't get, this is what she don't get. Us as stud, don't say a word. Us as stud, sometimes we just want to please. I mean, please. And just please. And you know, when you tire out the body, we just like, man, pop collar, we good. Let's go to sleep. Right? No. My baby like, baby. What you want? I'd be like, no, no, let's go because to sleep. I do love to be pleased, but I am a pleaser as well. You should do a very good job at it. But I'm just like, sometimes, babe, it's cool. <laughs> You're good. Lay on down. Lay your head on my pillow. No lady should do rejection. I don't care. What relationship you're in. Relax. Heterosexual, homosexual, relax. you should never accept rejection. But you That's a slap in the face. Lay your head on my pillow. I'm getting ready to slap Trey. Y'all can see, see Trey get slapped on camera. Domestic violence next episode, <laughs> as I said before. Oh, wow. Man, I can't believe we're almost through with our questions. But this last one right here, not last. We might have another one in. We're trying to you know, keep it real short and sweet for you guys. This one is from our hetero. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Can you talk about women who purposely go after married men and interfere and break up homes, then marry the person and think that's cool? Karma's a bitch. Oh. It's not just the heteros. Let yeah, me say this that. This is coming from a hetero. Oh, I'm Shaking sorry. this table. I'm sorry. This one did come from a heterosexual mm-hmm. person. And they're married. Mm-hmm. So I guess it kind of hits home for right. people that's married. Mm-hmm. When they have to deal with their friends going through this type of yes infidelities, absolutely. So it's can you talk about women who purposely purposely go after married men, mm-hmm. interfere, break up the happy home, or break up the homes, then marry them? Right. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Um, were you purposely going after someone in another relationship? That's that's just that's just bad. That's 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 bad. That's bad. First and foremost, that's bad. They're gonna to have to answer to the man above mm-hmm. because that's a big no no. If you purposely do that, that's, that's bad. a huge no no. I don't care if they said they're in the process of divorce; they're not <coughs> divorced. I don't care if they said, "Well, I'm just staying in the same house with my wife, soon to be ex wife, but we're getting ready to go through a divorce." That's still a no no because legally binding on that paper, they're still married. Right. Um. Ooh. They're gonna have to deal with that on their own. I mean, yeah, that's that's gonna be something that they're gonna have to deal with. It's not cool, and it's it's not cool. I, I don't um, condone it. I don't condone it. I don't like it. I don't you know care for stuff like this. But I'm not the one to judge. Right. And we on the outside looking in, we can't judge what other people know. do to get into a relationship. Right. Because. You may know more way. You may know way more than I know when it comes to these relationships and the person that you know got hurt behind this breaking up and the the husband leaving and going to this new relationship and marrying a new person and the wife the ex wife is now she's broke down and she's hurt behind it and because that's somebody that probably you were close to it bothers you and affects you as well. Karma is definitely the B, mm-hmm. and what goes around absolutely comes back around. Right. So that's kind of something that you have to pray about. Let it go. And let the Lord deal with it. That's true. That's it. That's all we can do. Right. I, I I can't slap nobody in the face because of, you know, them breaking up a happy home or breaking up a home, period. However, if they come to me and ask my advice or my opinions, I'm going to give it to you straight. No chaser. I don't side with people when things are wrong. I don't. I don't care who you are. I don't care how close we are. That's why I tell people when they come to me for advice, be careful what you ask me because you're going to get, you may get what you don't want to hear. And that could lead to us not talking anymore, us falling out. Mm-hmm. And at that point, when it's, when it's coming from my heart and I'm being truthful to who I am, 
I'm not going to sugarcoat anything about what I say. She doesn't. So please be careful if you ask me any questions. So mm-hmm. if, if, I, if I had a friend that came to me about breaking up a, a married home, we would have a problem. Mm-hmm. And I would definitely stress that problem. I don't, I don't like it. I wouldn't condone it. I actually probably wouldn't even want you in my space. And I would definitely not want that man in my space. Right. And that's how it would be for me. Wow. Okay. And that's how she feels about that. <laughs> so silly. Well, this is the... Uh, we, <laughs> You're crazy. We always have one question every time. What's wrong, baby? Nothing. Okay. We always have one question. I'm trying to look in the video to see if Brie can walk down the steps because I hear her feet. <laughs> I, hear, I hear her. Um, here she comes. I see her. And there she is. Brie, you are not supposed to be in our tape. Hey! This is how they do reality shows, right? Huh? And she have a band-aid on her face. <laughs> oh, I'm just telling y'all I'm about to go to my friend's house. She come pick me up. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's cool. No yeah. school tomorrow, so that's fine. You want to see my haircut? Yes, the people see your haircut. They don't even know you, Bree. Everybody, okay. that's our daughter, Bree. She's turning 18 in April. She's graduating this year and headed to college. She said, call me. <laughs> <laughs> she said, call me. That's funny. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, we always have one question that we get in every time. That either you can take it as being comical. I tend to do that because I'm a funny person. And sometimes I don't find anything funny. She doesn't. And Trey likes to laugh a lot. I, I find the humor in a lot of things. Um, so this is one that I thought was, I can tell there is some hurt behind it, but I was chuckling inside. So that's why you put it on here? I, no, that's why I put it at the end because I wasn't too sure who was going to get to it. But if we did, I was like, wow, this would be a great closure. Um, just to sum it up, it's about a couple in Valentine's Day gifts and one of the partners was just not too thrilled. And we would have talked about this had I not went to the the hospital to have surgery because this came right before I went into the hospital. Right. Actually before Valentine's Day. Right. It was right Right. after Valentine's Day because this was a Valentine's Day question. No, she said. Oh, Christmas. I'm sorry. This is right after Christmas. This is right after Christmas. And we didn't get to tape. So a person had bought um, their mate. Christmas gifts. You need to read it. And <laughs> Trey is so silly. He, I don't find this stuff funny. All right, let me go on and read this joint. Question. For Christmas, <laughs> I bought my mate two gifts. A house. <laughs> I, can't. I can't because me to read it. I would straight trip out if my baby did this to me. So I just got to laugh at the situation. Go ahead, baby. Please. Question. <laughs> For Christmas, I bought my mate two gifts. A heart fountain and some shoes. The shoes were too big. <laughs> I'm not going to know your partner's size, but go ahead. You, you guys, she was so disappointed. She was crying. She hated the gifts. She kept saying the shoes were too big. <laughs> like a big ass And the fountain is not me. She is a stud. She made me feel like a cramp. She made me feel like crap. She said, oh, she made me feel like crap. But you said cramp. I know who wrote this, so we can laugh because you're one of our permanent viewers that follow us forever. And we love you. you and we love, love you. you. So excuse us for laughing because now it's funny. She made me feel like crap. She told me because I didn't get the right size, I'm not into her. Now, Valentine's Day is coming up. Should I go all, all out because I got Christmas wrong? And she's telling me what she wants for V-Day. I like to surprise. Just don't want the surprise to be on me. LOL. <laughs> Help TNT. Love you guys. Moi. You see why I found it funny? <laughs> well, at least you LOL because it is funny now. I'm just saying. <laughs> First of all, you messed up because you ain't know the size. You should know your partner's size. That doesn't mean you're not into her. But your partner sound like a big old baby. But I'm she's, s- no, she's a stud. And she didn't want no heart fountain because she think that's girly. And she mad as hell that the shoes are too big. And you should have knew her damn size. Okay. Now, and then you said she was crying. She hated the gift. Like a punk. I'm sorry. I don't care. My baby can wrap up some leaves in a Ziploc bag and I will kiss all over and say, thank you, baby. Can I put and, some and sugar Trey on will. It? But you tell him what, what I would do. She would probably say, baby, what in the hell is this? I sure would. <laughs> and that's where we differ because I'm like, it ain't about what you get. Trey will love it. It's anything. the thought. Okay, she could probably toast her boogers on bread, and I would say this is a delicious sandwich. <laughs> I would, because she made it for me, and I know it was love. Uh-huh. Maybe we were out of butter, and she had to use her boogers. And tell him what I would do. She used to get the shit away from me, <laughs> <laughs> or she'll say, "I'm calling my mama and tell her you ain't feed me." I sure would, like she did today. 
I but did. anyway, come on. This is this is comical, you know, really? and that's why prior to the holidays, you always ask ask your mate if it's not something that you've heard her say she wants, ask her, give me five things you like, give me five things you might want for Christmas. So there will not there will be no surprises because you bought this damn stud a heart fountain. <laughs> <laughs> that's a girl gift, a heart fountain. Oh, that's girly to me. Well, maybe her stud giving her girl. Oh, well, if she, your stud giving you girl, then she probably deserved that damn heart fountain. <laughs> but no, seriously, she made you feel like crap. I feel sorry for you on that part, for real. But at least she was honest with you. She didn't take the gift. Like, oh, baby, this is so sweet. I love it. And then behind your back, man, this shit is ugly as hell. Y'all see what she bought me for Christmas. Desperate. So at least she didn't do that. At least she was telling you in up front. And then she cried. So she showed you she really hated it. <laughs> she really hated it. I picture in this. You see in the shoe, you try it on. And it's too big, and you just start crying. And the heart fountain. I think she cried because of the heart fountain. Well, the shoes, she could have wore just four socks or something. Okay. You guys, she was so disappointed. She was, and you know what? Get over it. She, yeah. So what? She's probably getting, you probably getting to know her. So now you need to write us and tell us, what did you get her for Valentine's Day, and did you make it up? And did she smile? Did she cry again? Was she excited? Was she, she happy? Did. She probably cried. Yeah, because Valentine's Day just was, what, last week? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So please, let us know what, please inbox us. I know as soon as you see this video, you're going to laugh and you're going to inbox me. Mm -hmm. So please inbox us and tell us what you bought that baby for Valentine's Day. Did you stud it up more? <laughs> did you get the right size shoe? Or did you just go all the way out? Yeah. And, you know, my baby, she's all, all throughout the year. Not Valentine's, not Christmas, not birthdays. She's always throwing things out there. I do. So when it's time to get her something, I know My that I'm going to know. definitely get her something that she has mentioned and then something that I want her to have. And I, I do it all the time. You're right. All okay. year round. I do all that. All year round. She goes, oh, baby, you know, this is nice. And I, I take that. note. I take mm -hmm. note. Sometimes I even write it down now on my new iPhone, which I received for Christmas. Thank you very much, baby. Mm -hmm. I, because that's another way of you showing yeah. your mate that you're paying attention yes. to what they're saying. But it's always good to always surprise your mate with something that they're not expecting. Get them something you know they want that will not be a disappointment, won't make them cry, yeah. and then step out on a limb and do something. Because my baby something. stepped out on a limb about me the iPad 2 for I Christmas, did. and he heard me say I want an iPad 2, she but I times. had no clue Trey was going to get me the iPad 2. Because I can be cheap at times. My baby, you're not cheap with me. Not her. But you are a cheap ass. Very yeah. much so. Very so. Oh, God, honey. Ooh, Trey don't want to buy a $20 shirt. He said that's too much. He wanted for 10 I think I'm a black Jew. <laughs> I think so. And I don't care about the price tag. If it's an $80 shirt, if it's a $100 shirt, if I like it, I'm buying it. Mm -mm, that's a lot of chicken wings. Right Whatever. Now. Anyway, no, for real, throughout the year, this is for all the couples out there that right. watch our shows. Throughout the year, it's always good to talk about things you like, things you want, places you want to go, mm -hmm. things you want to try. Because if you have that type of mate that is in tune to you and listens to what you say, those things will happen throughout the year. Right. And they'll come to pass. Right. So it won't be no surprises. Like you won't get a heart fountain because you never in your life said you want no damn heart fountain <laughs> necklace. So you, you might say, well, baby, I've seen this real nice, you know, masculine dog tag that I like. And then you oh will know God. to get your baby that nice masculine dog tag. So, you know, just going, you know, moving out through the rest of the year. I don't know what, we don't have any holidays coming up. We have Mother's Day, Father's Day. Probably can get him something nice to me, <laughs> <laughs> to me, any, every day is a holiday for me yes, when you're right. madly in love with the one you love. Absolutely. For real. This so, fantastic. you know, just make up, you know, when you're kissing and making up, surprise them with things you heard they like. Absolutely. And but it doesn't have to be yeah. on a holiday. And it don't have to be holidays. Because nah. I love spontaneous gifts. I love to... I'm in the mall and I see something like my baby. I'm going to pick it up. Yep. And vice versa. That's true. That's how we do. We do. Mm -hmm. And I love that baby. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. This was a special one. Right before we go, we want to give a big shout out. Big, big shout out to my brother and Tice, sister Nina, her son and Tice. They're they, getting married. They're getting married next year. At their engagement party last night. It was wonderful. We had a great time. It was wonderful seeing people laughing, dancing, getting our boogie on. Mm -hmm. Um, and some of our viewers, if you have announcements you want us to blast for you guys when we're taping, we don't mind. Don't mind if at you all. want to announce an anniversary, a graduation, a birthday, or a engagement, Whatever or a wedding, let us know. We'll us we'll, know. we'll share it on our next taping, and we promise we're going to get back to taping better at least twice a month, so you guys can keep tuning in, yeah. and you know you don't have to ask when the next video coming out because we. Kind of fell by the waist out a little bit, and my surgery really put us back more. That was more important, I'm sure you. And guys my baby was not that. playing. It was, this was Doctor yeah. Seuss, and he do not play about me when I'm sick. I'd rather go back, Doctor Gooden. 
Well, DG. <laughs> whatever. DG you were, a place to be. You were holding it down. Trey did not baby. leave that house. I was in the hospital for six days. Trey was in the hospital for six days. I was. And I, I, I was quite um, thrown when everyone keeps asking me, am I going home? <laughs> and that baby said, I'm not going I anywhere. Said, I'm not leaving her. She long she's when in the she hospital. Leaves, that's when I leave. Exactly. I had my cot. I had my pajamas. Yeah, and we stayed at a very nice hospital, so they treated us very well. Big shouts to Northside, always and forever. But that goes to show you true love. He did not yes. leave my side. And just in case you guys need a great um, OBGYN, her name is Dr. Bruscato. And yep. yes, I'm doing an information infomercial right now. She's a great doctor. She does great surgeries. She's um, a gynecologist, and she also delivers babies. Delivers babies. So yes. if you're trying to have babies, and she loves the gay couples. She mm -hmm. has. She's not. You know, she don't care what the lifestyle is. She mm -hmm. cares about everybody. She takes care of all her patients. Well, she's very open. And she loved me and Trey. She's um, affiliated with um, Northside, and her phone number is. Four zero four. If you live in Atlanta, Georgia area, absolutely. Four we have viewers everywhere, babe. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Doctor Buscado here in Atlanta, Georgia, four zero four two five six four one four four. Doctor Buscado, wonderful, wonderful doctor. Um, just let her know that Trey or Tanya sent you, or both of us, and she will just smile. Okay, she's a wonderful lady. And don't forget, you also follow me at Golden, G-O-L-D-N, Perfection, mm -hmm. on Twitter. Don't forget, you can also visit my website, www.golden-perfection, and that's G-O-L-D-E-N-perfection.com. Um, if you guys look in the book for weddings, makeup artists, coaching for pageants, image consultant, I do it all. She, um, all around. She's also going to be um, partaking in, a, in, in an event. Yeah. But I can't believe you didn't share, baby. I'm sorry. I'm judging Miss Team USA pageant here in Atlanta. It's mm -hmm. next month in March. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud to be a part of the judges panel. Um, that's actual one of Donald Trump's um, sub subsidiaries um, of his big Miss, the national one, the yes. Miss America and Miss Universe. Yes. It's all a part of that. So I'm glad to be judging that pageant as well. And it actually can open up more doors for myself as well. Absolutely. It's a fantastic year, 2012. We're ready and we're taking yeah, it on. I'm ready to get married. I'm ready to go to Hawaii. And we're going to come back and plan the reception here in Atlanta. It's going to be very nice and intimate and sexy. It is going to be sexy, huh? Oh, everything we do is sexy. Eyes. Sexy. Yes. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, subscribe to our channel on send YouTube. Send your questions. Send your questions. Follow send us on Twitter. Send your feedback. Twit, twit, Twitter, da, da, twit, twit, Twitter. Uh, big shout out to uh, what's her name, Corinne. She's been she's been communicating with us. What's up, girl? Hopefully you're gonna watch our video. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, Ellen, we've been hitting you up. We're trying to be on the show. Come on now. Exactly. Chelsea Handler, come on. <laughs> Wendy Williams, come on. We waiting. But anyway, logo. I know you're gonna be the first one to hit us up, and then everybody gonna want us <laughs> because this right here ain't nothing but power. You got that right. Boom. And they did say that we weren't signing out properly the okay. last episode. Well, you know what? So we're going to make sure different. we sign it. No, we're going to make sure we sign out properly because it's you, 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 you. You know, it's, I love you. You did it first. I love you, baby. I love you more. Forever, forever and ever. Always. always. Mwah. Mwah. And Deuces. that's why I love Loveology viewers. Trey and Loveology. We're out. Until next time. We love Be you. nice to each other and love on each other. Yep. Put the cell phones down sometime and hug and touch and cuddle each other. Yeah. You can even kiss the stuff. Anyway, on that note, <laughs> good night. We're out. <laughs> so silly.